The following poems are from my chapbook, The Sorcerers Who Left Too Soon, Poems After Remedios Varro, published by Coven Editions in fall 2019. Dead Leaves If I do not tell you of the lichen growing on the living room floor, will you feel it on the soles of your feet? What of the yellowed teeth blowing in from the parlor? Can you taste them? If I do not tell you of the bees swarming and the wax dripping from the ceiling, will you notice the new thickness in the air? I should tell you that the yarn in your hands was spun from my capillaries. I should tell you that the chimney is blocked and I cannot go outside to hire someone to clean it. I should tell you that I wove your hair into handmade paper, cut it into perfect squares, and folded swans while you slept. You sit prone in your wedding gown, the bones of our house, spit up and around you. You will burn when you throw your netting into the fire, and it leaps back at you, because I never told you the chimney needed to be cleaned. You will die slowly in our house, and I will dance in the shadows and toss paper cranes at your blank face until you, too, come home. Wild Cat as Pallbearer they said whoever died in the forest would go straight to heaven, skip purgatory, the awkward icebreakers, the get-to-know-you questionnaire, confession, and last rites. So, I lay down on a bed of moss and waited for death. Spiders crawled all around me and all over me. The cats purred their voices' dusty leaves on the ground. They said whoever died in the forest would go straight to heaven, skip the autopsy, the bowl-cut scalp, an indignity of my brain in the hand of a sneering man in a lab coat lauding my last days. I made a hammock out of leaves and tried to sleep. I welcomed death in my Ophelian dress, and when it did not come, I wept and pet the wild cats, rough like a child, hoping to be scratched, that a scratch would infect and that this would be my cause of death. Female Spirit of the Night I am little more than a horned moth rotting, rotting on the windowsill. But from my bones I carve long knives, slicing, slicing, thinner still. I will not remember you, but your skin will be my something blue. I am little more than a Rorschach blot, screeching, screeching on a feathered bed. But with my will I stare and grow teeth, breathing heavy near your head. You will not remember me but my blood will be your eulogy. Invocation. Today you took a detour on your way to teach Sunday school. Your stiff white collar crept along your pink neck like a centipede. Your horn was hot copper in the sun, and the sun, it coughed at the single note you played while you descended into the ground. In a coyote den, eye contact is the sign of hunger, and here, hunger is the sign of belief and coyotes only believe in blood and meat. The walls birthed knobby knees, and faces like fiery morals that do not judge but wait for someone to ask their opinion. Your students were waiting, but the cave was warm and damp like the breath of a lover or a canine, and somewhere along the way, you lost your shoes. Hagiography of Owls 1. The eyes of an owl are not really eyeballs. They are instead long, immobile tubes. Owls search for prey through these glass telescopes. 2. Their bodies are made of the same soft, sacred wood as mandolins. 3. The feel of an owl watching you is the same that you get when you run your hand absentmindedly along a wooden fence and feel the splendors pull you in, begging you to burrow into the beam like a wharf borer. 4. The feeling of an owl watching you is like the thrill of a straight razor on your neck. 5. When there is plenty to eat, all owls become polyamorous. 6. When God created different species of birds, each new edition had to be run by a committee of gray owls for final approval. 7. Owls hunt other owls, not because they are cannibalistic, but because they hunger to be consumed by their lovers. 
8. Owls have developed a highly sophisticated distilling process in which they turn kingfisher's thoughts into a potent alcohol that tastes somewhat like egg and somewhat like elderflower. 9. An owl has three eyelids, one for blinking, one for sleeping, and one for plotting revenge. 10. Some owls growl, and it sounds like your husband during sex. 11. Owl pellets are like curiosity cabinets. They hold skeletons, smooth stones, and tiny pairs of silver scissors. 12. Owl pellets are babies wrapped in brown wool and left on the forest doorstep. 13. The great horned owl can curl its talons with the strength of Apollon's bite. 14. The feeling of an owl watching you is the same as when you return from holiday to find all of your plants and your mother-in-law dead. 15. The feeling of an owl watching you is the same as being buried alive with only your least favorite sweater and a candle that smells like ammonium. Born again. <clears throat> Build a hexagonal hut out of red oak with four archways representing the four humors, blood, yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm. Wallpaper it with dead leaves and glue lichen to the ceiling. Make sure to leave a gaping hole to expose the sky, and each month on the waning crescent moon, place a goblet of stolen communion wine on a table in the center. Naked, you must observe the moon's reflection in the wine and then anoint your body with the blood of a god you do not believe in. Lick the thorns that creep in under the archways. Do this for 36 moons and collect a smooth white stone that has bathed in moonlight each time. On the eve of the 37th moon, destroy the hut and swallow the stones. Wade into the lake, the amniotic sac of the forest. You will gestate for nine and a half months and be born anew.